So in this video, I want to look at how to make a moving platform such that when the player jumps on the platform, the platform will move and take the player with them to a second location. If the player then jumps off the platform or falls off the platform, the platform will return to its initial position. So let's go ahead and get started. If we first take a look at how I've built the platform, the platform itself is an empty parent and all, that empty parent is also hosting the flow machine and the flow macro. That empty parent has two children. The first is a cube, which is the visualization of the platform. And that visualization also has two colliders. The first collider is left as a collider, and this gives a nice physical platform for the player to stand on. So the player doesn't fall through the platform. The second collider has the is trigger option set as true, so that it's not a physically hard object, so the player can move through it, but it'll allow the detection of other colliders or other triggers moving through that volume. And that's gonna let us know whether the player jumps onto this platform or jumps off the platform. The second child is labeled target one. And this is just an empty game object. And this is the object that the platform is going to move towards. So this empty object can be placed anywhere in the scene and that's where the platform will move. Now the platform is not going to be smart enough to avoid trees or mountains or anything like that. It's going to move from point A to point B. But the advantage of having this done this way so that it, we're moving towards an empty game object is that that empty game object can be moved anywhere in the scene we're not having to hard code where we want the um, platform to move. And we can also duplicate this platform, especially if it's a prefab. We can duplicate this and have several of these in our scene, each with its own target. So let's take a look at the flow macro. So rather than build it up unit by unit like I have in other tutorials, this one's a little bit more complex and I, I think that'll take too long to do. So what I have instead is I've built the flow macro and I want to step through it unit by unit, chunk by chunk, and explain what's going on. So as you can see here, I've got my flow macro and I've already divvied it up. I've broken it up into large colored boxes, if you will. And these large colored boxes are a great organizational tool, especially if you are collaborating with someone and you wanna to try to communicate what you're trying to do in the flow macro or what should be happening in that flow macro. If those are new to you, you can create those by holding command or control, depending on whether you're Mac or OS, and dragging the box. If you select the box, you'll have an option to change the color of the box. You can also, uh, if you click on the header of the box, you can change the text that's there to get a better description of what's going on. So let's take a look at this rust or orange colored box here. This is all the code that runs when the player lands on the platform. The key piece here, the trigger, the enter, entry point here is the on trigger enter event. And this occurs whenever a trigger or a collider enters the trigger that's on the platform. We wanna make sure that what's triggering this, what's starting this code is actually the player. And so that's where we use the compare tag unit. Uh, we wanna check whatever object entered into the trigger, we wanna check that its tag is the player. If that's true, that means the player has jumped onto it. And we wanna set the value of a variable. In this case, the player is on platform variable. And we wanna set that equal to true. This lets us track whether the player is on the platform or off the platform in the whole flow macro. And you can see that that variable is defined in my graph variables. It's a graph variable, not a scene variable or an object variable. And it's a player on platform and type bool. And it starts as false, assuming that the player will start off of the platform. After we set the value of that variable, we need to do one other thing that's really important. We need to parent the player to the platform. And the reason we need to do this is as the platform moves, it can typically leave the player behind. There's no friction, at least as of now, between the player and the platform, so the player will just slide off the platform. Now, yes, you could go in and change some physics materials and add some friction, and that kind of works, but it doesn't necessarily create the behavior that players are expecting and probably that you want from your game. We're gonna use the unit game object find with tag. We're gonna go, we're gonna go out into the scene and look for an object that is tagged player. We're gonna return that object, and then we're gonna set the parent of that object. Or more specifically, we're gonna set the parent of that transform. And we're gonna set that parent to the zeroth child of our platform. Again, remember the structure of how we put our platform together. The zeroth child is the visualization of the platform. It's gonna be the piece that's actually moving. And that's what we wanna parent it to, is the part of the platform that's actually moving. And that's what we're doing with the transform get child unit on the far left. Now, if we move up to the black box, this is this code that's gonna run when the player leaves the trigger. So again, our entry point here is the on trigger exit. We do the same kind of compare tag. We're checking to make sure that this object that left the trigger is the player. If that's true, we once again set the variable of player on platform, but in this case we set it to false. 
Again, this helps us track whether the player is on or off the platform. And then again, just like before, we need to do something with the parent of the player. When the player jumps off the platform, we don't want the player to still be parented to this platform. So we need to set the player's parent as null or empty. And so once again, we're going to use the game object find with tag, go find the player. Then we're going to set the parent of that uh, transform and we're going to set it equal to null. And null just means empty, nothing. And so what that's going to do is the player is going to have no parent. It's going to be its own parent, if you will, in the hierarchy. Moving down, let's take a look at what's going on over here in the yellow block. And this is going to check and see if the platform can move. And this is doing two things. The first one here is we're checking to see if the player on the platform. We're just checking the value of that Boolean variable that we set earlier in our rust and black colored boxes. We want to make sure the player is on the platform before we start moving. Now I've added another feature here in the yellow box and it's in the sub box, a black sub box. And what this is doing is looking to see how many collectibles the player has picked up. Now you may or may not want this functionality. If you don't want this functionality, you can get rid of this black box and simply connect the get variable player on platform directly to the branch that's over in the blue box. But what we're doing here is we're getting the variable of the, of the collected. How many has this player collected? and we're comparing it to, in this case, the value of three. If the player has collected three or more, we pass on a true. We go into the and statement. That will evaluate to true if the player's on the platform and the player has collected at least three objects. We then pass that value over here into the blue box where we're gonna start to move our platform. So now let's look at how we actually move the platform. And this is a little bit more complicated and you can see that there's lines going kind of all over the place. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So essentially what we're doing here, we are triggering this code with the update event. So this is happening every frame. We're checking this every frame. We're immediately going down to the branch statement on the bottom left of the blue box. And this is checking the conditions that were in the yellow box. So we're making sure the player's on the platform and that we've collected sufficient collectibles. If this is true, we're gonna to move towards the target. If it's false, we're gonna move back to the starting position. Now, if we look at this upper box here where we move to the target, there's a, a fair amount going on here. First off, we need to know what target are we going to? And so what we're doing is we're getting the first child. Okay? And remember, we start counting at zero. So the first child is actually the second child. We get the position of that object. And that's the target that we wanna to get to. That's where we wanna to go towards. And then we use this unit that's provided by Bolt that saves us a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it's the move towards unit. What we give it is the current position of the object, the target where we are trying to get to. And then the third argument is the max delta. And this has to do with how big of a step are we going to take each frame or each second. And so the larger that value, the faster the object's going to move. Now, if you notice back here on the left, we've got to figure out what object are we going to move. And that's where we're getting the transform get child. We're looking at the zeroth child and we're getting the position of that and sending that position the current position of that visualization to the move towards unit. That move towards unit then gives us a new position for this platform that's a little bit closer to the target. And then we send that new position down to the transform to set a new position for the visualization or the platform object. You'll also note that in the move towards, I've toggled the option per second. And what this will do is have the movement uh, fixed based in time rather than frame rate. So if your computer is faster, slower, the object will appear to move at the same speed and is time dependent rather than frame rate dependent. Now, if the branch evaluates as false, meaning the player is either not on the platform or we haven't collected enough collectibles, we wanna move back to the starting position. Now, if the platform hasn't moved, it's just gonna stay where it is. But if the player falls off the platform, this will move the, pl the platform back to its starting position. We're doing a very similar thing here that we did above in the moves to target. We're getting the position. In this case, we're looking at the parent object because we're just gonna move back to the parent object where we started. That's our target for the moving backwards. We send that into the move towards unit, just like we did before. We go out and get the transform of the zeroth child, and we send that back into the move towards unit as the current position. Using all that again, we get a new position out of the move towards and set the position 
of our platform to that new position. So there you go. I realized that last piece is a little confusing. It's a little spaghetti-like. It's not super linear. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And I hope this will allow you to add a moving platform into your game. This should work pretty well in two dimensions or three dimensions, whichever your game is using. You can also modify this to have multiple waypoints so that the platform would move to target one, to target two, to target three. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Hope you found that useful and I hope you'll join me for my next video.